Okay, so pleasant good uh, good morning, everyone. Today we'll be looking at blood and blood vessels. Right? So we're looking at blood and blood vessels as it relates. This session ties in with lab the lecture relating to blood, and is blood important to us? If I were to ask you, is blood important? What would you say? Most definitely, sir. Yeah, so why is it important? What does blood do for us? Does it do anything for us? Do we need blood? Could we live without blood? No, sir, because it gives us our nutrition. Right, it gives us nutrition. nutrition. Right, so most importantly, it, um, it provides nutrition in terms of carrying it around the body itself, most critically. And what else does blood do in terms of its critical function? What else is blood, blood important for? Not an important function of blood. Removal of waste. Removal of waste products, yes, yes. It's like a road, it's a conduit. And more, the, probably the most important one, which has to do with the structure and the availability of a protein known as hemoglobin. What does it do? In terms, carbon dioxide. It removes. It removes, and what does it carry in the in the body? Oxygen. Most critical, right? So there's this strong affinity for oxygen by this protein present in hemoglobin. Sorry, in the red blood cell, hemoglobin, and it binds to form oxyhemoglobin, carries oxygen throughout the body. And what do we use that oxygen for? Three words. We use it to break down. We use oxygen to break down. It's a word that rhymes with good. Food, yeah, very good, yeah. So we use that oxygen to break down food. So critical is carried along using blood to do that. All right, so you carry it around to break down food. And oxygen, I mean, red blood cells love oxygen. There's only one other substance, <clears throat> excuse me, one other substance, if it is present, that blood will forget about the oxygen and take up. What substance is that? Not carbon dioxide, but not two um, that oxygens, but one oxygen. So now it's not carbon dioxide, but carbon monoxide you're talking about, sir. Carbon monoxide, very true. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So if it has a choice between oxygen and carbon monoxide, it will take up in preference, it will take up the carbon monoxide, which is why it's not a very good idea to um, breathe in, or sorry, to start a car in an enclosed area. When you look at garages, anytime you see in a garage, it's either an open air garage, or usually the garage has a very high um, towering ceiling and it has like a big gap, you know, at the top to let air in and out. Because carbon monoxide is usually produced as an incomplete combustion or burning of fossil fuels. On the topic of fossil fuels, price of, price of gas going up a dollar come when Monday. Is this Monday going up or is next week? Which one it is? The 19th, sir. That is next week? The 19th. Next week, please, God. Yeah. Yeah, the 19th. Today is the 9, 9 and 7, 16, 17, 18, yeah. Um, 9 and 7, 16, 17, like next week, Tuesday, because Easter Monday is a holiday. So after Easter, on Tuesday, right? So not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. So if you have a big, well, I'm going to give you all the ideas. I want to see if you have a big tank full of top with gasoline, but that doesn't, <laughs> that, that wouldn't really last long. And it's as a self-defeatist thing. But yes, so just uh, in terms of energy, right? Energy, break down food to produce energy in the body itself. Carbon monoxide, if it is present, is taken up in preference. And as we see in garages, high top, to allow the um, passage of, of air to flow freely through it and remove carbon monoxide, which is actually both odorless and tasteless, and is produced as a result of the combustion of fossil fuels, i.e. gasoline, diesel, and so on. All right, so it's always important then that, you know, it, it is important that always be not a starter kind of enclosed area. All right. Okay. So let's now get on to the whole notion of blood. So blood and blood vessels, 
right? We have whole blood and whole blood consists of both form elements and plasma. The formed elements themselves consist of erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells, lymphocytes, which we did look at today, right? Um, the white blood cells and then thrombocytes, which are very important in terms of the clotting. The plasma consists of water and solutes. And you have this separation. How do they separate blood? One word, how do they separate it? Sorry, so what, what's the question again? How do they separate? Yeah, how do they separate blood into plasma and form elements? So they do it by doing one thing. So the answer then is a one word. Centrifuge? Ah, yes, correct. Yeah, by spinning it or centrifuging it, right? Centrifugation. So when they spin it, the formed elements, they move, it moves down in the test tube and the plasma remains above it. Very good. So in terms of the plasma, it's straw colored. It's viscous, which means it's not like water. You know, it's a little, has a little thick. It's a little, you know, um, thick as it will. 90% water, but it has 10% solutes which includes respiratory gases, salt, hormones, and proteins. One of the more important proteins present in blood is, and you find it in, in, in eggs as well, the eggs that we eat, which is, a, what is the white of the egg called? Albumin. Albumin. And what does albumin do in terms of the function? It's a carrier protein. So it's like a maxi taxi on the road, right? Think about it like that. If something needs to move around, particularly other proteins, if it needs to move around, they, they look for their particular maxi, either a black band if they're going Princess Tongue um, or all the environs thereof, either a brown band if we're going Laramine and beyond there, green band for Port of Spain, Chaguanas, all on the sort of the old road um, going up there. Um, blue if it's in Tobago, a blue band, Maxi, is over there. Red band if you're going on the east-west corridor, right, all the way from Toko, all the way across to Dago, and so on, Maracas, all the way there, all right? So think about the... Uh, albumin it's carrier protein and that's why it gives blood the fresh smell you know usually when you smell it smells fresh and it's very similar to if you think about it it's very similar to eggs and that is due in part to the presence of that protein albumin the erythrocytes or the red blood cells themselves this shape they're biconcave right so it doesn't it has a on both sides you have this depression it doesn't have a nucleus uh, Actually, it doesn't have a nucleus until it becomes mature. When it becomes mature, it kicks out the nucleus in order that it becomes this efficient oxygen carrying machine, right? So initially it does have a nucleus, but it gets rid of it because of the fact it has this protein called hemoglobin. So the major function is to carry indeed oxygen. And since it has the protein present there, well, it doesn't need the brain to tell it to do anything. So it kicks all the brain in terms of maximizing the space to carry it. They usually last 120 days right, before they are broken down and the components are recycled. So the major function, as we mentioned, transport oxygen and CO2, heme, Right, which is the iron component. So the globin, which is the protein, must have heme bound to it, Fe2 plus iron. And this actually helps it function properly, which is why persons who are anemic and they don't have um, proper, you know, it has to do with their blood. Um, one of the major ways to correct it is by taking iron supplements or food rich in blood. And therefore you increase that heme component. So that's why, in certain instances relating to anemia that persons are prescribed iron supplements. Hemoglobin binds easily, as we mentioned, and the molecules can transport four oxygen, so each one can transport four of them. The leukocytes or the white blood cells, we looked at it today in terms of its role in the immune system, and a right stain is used to differentiate the different blood cells. And there are two types when you stain them. The granulocytes, so-called, if you look here, and we look in a little more detail just now, you actually see the granules and the agranulocytes, A meaning not. It doesn't have any granules or grains associated with them. Could you think of a word which you could change the meaning by adding the letter A to it? Could you think of a word where you change the meaning, like, you know, you get the opposite of it. 
Anaerobic, aerobic. Aerobic, anaerobic, I hear you. And that's a very good example where you use an to negate it. Quite true. Well done. Anybody else have any other example? Okay. You'll, you'll give it some thought or find none come to mind <laughs> except granular site. Go ahead. Or something, so? One more time. I think if you put the word A in front of it, in front of febrile, it changes the meaning. Or oh, afebrile, okay. From okay, in terms of giving it the opposite um, uh, meaning, okay. There you go. There you go. So that is one example. You know, as you mentioned there, febrile and afebrile. Good. I'm glad you mentioned that. Great. All right. Let's continue. All right, so the granular sites, as we mentioned, they have granules which are visible. So they stain with a special stain, which is known as a right stain. And here's a neutrophil. So there's a, one example here. We will have to go back real quick. Um, oh, yes, it is. And yeah, we're hearing you quite clearly, Charles. So I want to say it's working. So you don't have no problem there. Right, so the granulocytes or the green, right, I call them the Ben, B E N, a nice way to remember it. So the greeny ones are Ben, the basophils, the eosins, and eosinophils, and the neutrophils. And those without greens, those are the LMs, right, the lymphocytes and the monocytes. Nice way to remember them, they come in sequence, H I J K L M, as in the letters of the alphabet, right? So no greens, LM, whereas the greeny ones, Think about Ben, think about, um, so, you know, how could we draw a parallel in terms of remembering? Could you see a connection between grains and Ben? You could, I hear what you're saying. So, so you have Uncle Ben Rice. That's what you were saying there in the chat. Let me have a look. So am I only one hearing you? Is it, only, oh, you're not hearing me? You all are hearing me? Yes, yeah, so we're hearing you. Okay, all right, somebody. So is your lunch? Uh, Somebody has put a message. So something probably is indeed wrong with his um thing like that. With his uh, microphone. Yeah, so you know Uncle Ben's rice. Okay. Uh, there's this yes, rice please. called Uncle Ben actually. They are found that to be um uh, uh not politically correct. So they both Uncle Ben and Uncle Jemima's, I think they not they think they've changed the name. But Uncle Ben's rice, so Ben. That's why I remember. Ben is a green, you know, rice is a green. So the granular sites, Uncle Ben, B-E-N. So therefore the other two, LM, those are the non leukocytes non-granular sites. Anybody else could think of a way to remember it in terms of Ben and gran? Granular sites, anybody? So, sir, my grandfather named Ben. So gran is like, oh, and he Ben. Now when he walk, he don't walk straight. I hear what you're saying. So gran as an old, you know, bent persons are bent. So that's another way to remember it. Okay, let's go forward. Okay, so neutrophil, hmm, neutrophil, granulocytes or a granulocyte? Which one is it? Granulocytes. Right, granulocyte because B-E-N, right? A granulocyte, oh, all right, as we saw there. A granulocyte, granulocytes have the grains, a granulocyte or non granulocyte, those are without. So, neutrophil, so here we see um, it has the grains in it and it is multi lobed, no destructure, right? Clear? But it has multi lobes or multiple parts to it. Kind of like what this reminds you of when you see it, like for those who got like, like sausages on a string, what else it looks like? Okay, we'll go with sausages on a string. You said, mm -hmm, go ahead, go ahead. No, sir, how you said sausages on a string, that's anything really, stick my <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I can't think Sorry. of anything else. It, um, it, you could think about somebody wearing our glasses with a thick mustache. Okay, uh, well, maybe I'm going to- Or a string, yes, yes, yes. A string. 
quite so, right? So that's one example. Eosinophil, is this granulocytes or not? It doesn't have grains on it. Granulocyte, because B-E-N, remember? Green or grandpa, Ben up, right? And this one looks, I always think about it like somebody wearing a cool shades, right? And importantly, it has red granules associated with it. Notice this one is blue. The greens are really blue when you use the stain. This one is red, it stains red. And this one kills worms and it releases enzymes, the eosinophil. Then the last of the one, Uncle Ben B, the basophil, this one it has two lobes, whereas the first one is multi-lobed, has about, you know, quite a bit. This one only has two. And it has purple granules associated with it, and it contains histamine, an inflammatory chemical. All right, so, so I've heard the word histamine before. Where have you heard histamine before? So that has to do with like an allergic reaction. Correct. Something. In terms of tablets, right? So they're, so histamine, so what do you think they do in terms of taking, uh, what do you think um, histamines do? Uh, allergies like yeah so it produce so usually so if you do get an allergic reaction right so an inflammatory response what would it do as it relates to let's say your respiratory passage would it swell it or would it bring it down when you have an allergic response so the antihistamine should make it the swelling go down yeah so therefore the histamines cause swelling and why would you want swelling to occur if you have an allergic response or if you have even a cut why would you want swelling to occur because when you have swelling what you have the pooling of blood when you have the pooling of blood that means more remember there is the possibility of infection so when you do have the pooling of blood that actually brings um the blood and in this case, also components of the white blood, the white blood, blood cells, it brings them to the area. And that is why you usually have that occurring in terms of being brought to the area, right? You do have swelling occurring and that's why histamine is released. But if it does go on to your um, lungs, this is where it to be very tricky. So that's why some persons who have allergic, certain allergic responses, one of the things they do is that they, you would have swelling occurring and therefore what you need to do is to take an antihistamine. So the antihistamine has quite rightly, as Charles and others mentioned, it would reduce that swelling. But the swelling is usually is a normal reaction of the body to bring the blood to the localized area. Because uh, when you do bring the blood, you will bring along the leukocytes as well. It comes to the area, right? So that's that something that is very important to take note of. All right, so the agranulocytes, as we mentioned, they lack visible um, granules, and some examples are shown here. The LM, uh, the lymphocytes, the nucleus, notice, right, it almost completely fills the cell itself, right, it's very big. What cells are these I'm pointing to? What, what cells do you think are these out here? Which ones do you think these are? The red blood cells. The red right. blood cells, right? RBC, not to be confused with Royal Bank of Canada, but these are the red blood cells. Okay, very good. So now let's look to the other one, L and the M, right? LM, remember they follow. Once you think about uh, lymphocytes, the other one is M, monocytes. They follow sequentially in terms of the alphabet. So the monocytes, and these are the ones Right, these are the phagocytotic ones. They, they have a U-shaped nucleus and they are very large. Look at it relative to a red blood cell. Right, it's almost, if you look at these three here, it's almost about the size of three red blood cells. So it's very large and they're phagocytotic, right? Which means then they move like a Pac-Man. They eat, right? Chomp, 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 chomp. Now these are the next ones are the thrombocytes. And these are just fragments, fragments of the megakaryocytes, and these engage in hemostasis, right? What is hemostasis? What is hemostasis? Balancing of blood cells. And Mm -hmm. Is it the balance, um, the internal balance of your, oh gosh, 
as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to regulate your internal mm -hmm. um, environments, body to regulate. Oh, the I know what you're thinking about. You're thinking about uh, homeostasis. <laughs> it's in my mind, and as soon as I started talking, just go. <laughs> it's all good. You're thinking about homeostasis. Right, maintenance of a constant right. internal environment. <laughs> so that one is so homeostasis. Stopping bleeding, sir. Right, so hemostasis is really stopping the bleeding and initiating the repair. And it's a very common mis um, you know, error that people make, mixing up homeostasis and hemostasis. That reminds me as well. In the, um, there's another there's another word that's very, two other words are very close, right? So homeo, because home, the root of the word homeo comes from homo, meaning same, and but stasis means state. So homeo, homo, homeo, I don't get it. homeostasis means the maintenance of a constant internal environment. But hemo, heme, of course, refers to blood and stasis is state. So hemostasis refers actually to the ability to stop bleeding, right? And to re initiate repairs associated with it, right? So. Right, that is, <laughs> I'm glad you brought it up because they're very common. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yes, they're very, very common. Yeah, because the only difference is two O's, right? Him, well, O and E, yes, in terms of the variation. Okay. So now let's look at some blood vessels, arteries and veins. These are the two major ones. And when we look at the arteries and veins, they, the arteries, what difference could you say between these two? If I were to ask you, what's the major difference between artery and a vein? This is a vein, this is an artery. What differences can you say? So the artery is more round. Round, so it has a more definite shape to it, yes, as compared to the vein shown here. What else? The walls are much more thicker right. than that of skin. Right, very good. So the thickness of the walls, and somebody has mentioned it as well, very good. So here we see the adventitia and the media. Tunica, anybody here into clothes and clothing? Tunica refers to what? It's an Italian word. I want to say the root of the word. And it the means tunic a tunic. A tunic. And what is a tunic? Something that rhymes with goat. It's a piece of clothing that rhymes with goat. Is a vegetable like a carrot kind of thing? Oh, that's a turnip. The, yes. The yeah. tunic is like a kind of throw over over you, almost like a poncho. Coat. Right. Like Thank coat. you. Coat was the word I was looking for. So it poncho, everything, everything you all say is correct. But the tunic specifically refers uh, to a coat. So you have the tunic. And the reason why they call it a coat, as you rightly say, because just like how you mentioned poncho, something to throw over, you know, it's like it's shown over the blood vessels. So the tunica um, media is in the middle, adventitia tunica is on the outside, right? And then you have the intima is on the inside. So these are all coats or linings referring to those. All right, any other difference, differences you could see? The artery is bigger than the vein. In terms of the size, arteries size, are larger. Yeah. Right? No, you're quite right. Yes, yes. Anything else? So, um, between the vein and the arteries, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. One will have a valve and one wouldn't have a valve. Ooh, yes, yes, yes. Right? So why would you want to have valves in them? To prevent backflow. To prevent backflow. And you know which one has valves and which one don't? The vein has the valve. Vein has valves and the arteries, right? Because of the fact they're muscular and could constrict, right? Good. So here we are seeing in a little more detail. Oh, just one thing we missed out. What about the size of the space in the middle? Here's a lumen or the space. The lumen is the space. Which one would you say in this example is larger? The space here or the space here? And this one, the lumen here. Uh, and it could argue there's it here is actually smaller because this is the intima here. No, this is the intima line in here. So this would be, I don't know what this part here, because we do have the tunica intima here. So the lumen would be just this part here, the clear part, not all of this to the back here. Okay, this is a poor example um, to use. But in general, which one would have the larger lumens? Which one would have the bigger lumen, an artery or a vein? The artery, sir. And why is that so? 
because of the um, pressure fluctuation and so these extra walls would allow for, allow for that to happen more better. Like I said, like that. So you said the, the arches would have the larger lumen than the veins. Um... More volume of blood. And in fact, what you would what you would notice as actually this is probably just an artifact where we're looking at here. Artifact just means sometimes you have uh, funny staining present, probably sometimes due to poor technique using the staining contamination. But the lumen for the vein would actually be all here. This would be the end of it. So all of this would be the lumen. So in veins, actually, the lumens are larger, whereas in arteries, the lumens are indeed smaller. And one of the reasons, one of the reasons why um, the lumen would be smaller, because you mentioned that blood flow, right? With the veins, remember the- So, you know, I was, I totally mixed up the question. I was thinking about the, the, the media, or oh, the tunica, the thickness, yes. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's okay, it happens all the time. And the reason why this one would be smaller is because remember with the veins, right, they don't have a muscular wall, they can't vary the, um, or regulate the flow of blood through it. Whereas the artery could, it has a muscular wall. So if need be, right, it could contract or relax um, the muscular wall and they could vary the size of their lumen. So in generally it's smaller because of the fact they have a muscular lumen and they could vary it. Whereas the veins, they don't have a very muscular lumen. So in order to get the blood flow through it, they are just by nature, they're larger because of the fact they can't vary the size of their lumens like the um, arteries could do. So what we find is in terms of veins, veins are generally the lumen is generally larger than the artery. Here we're looking at the wall itself. This is the tunica media. Intima, this is the one that is closest then to the, um, the blood. So the blood will be flowing through here. The intima, as the name implies, intima, very familiar to the word intimate, it means it's closest to. And here we have the external elastic and internal elastic um, laminas. And these structures shown here, this will be the red blood cells or the erythrocytes. Capillaries, right? we mentioned this morning, one cell thick, approximately four micrometers in diameter, four to 10, or less than 10 is a good estimate, right? Whereas the cells of the lymphatic, uh, these are above 10, anywhere from 10 to 80 micrometers in diameter. All right, so these capillaries, they're really small endothelial and as somebody pointed out who, who, who was that pointed it out there one cell thick who was it that pointed out this morning was it um was it you crystal or somebody pointed it out it told us it was one cell thick very true and it could allow an easy passage of things through it because of the fact they're so thin so those are the capillaries hmm. now we're getting into these major blood vessels. And the great vessels, these are the major ones. So we're looking at here, these are, this is a cadaveric specimen. So it means then this was live, well, taken from um, a deceased person and preserved in, well, they use, most of the time they use formaldehyde. So it gets this kind of brownish tinge to it. So you all will see this um, later on. And of course, you'll see it in live, of course, during your professional career. We're looking at the heart, and in terms of the great vessels, right, you have the superior and inferior vena cava, the aorta, this is the main artery that leaves the heart itself, sending the blood into the systemic circulation. Left and right lung, and what goes to the left and right lung? In terms from the heart, in terms of the pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary artery pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lung and oxygenated blood is returned via the pulmonary vein. Very true. So usually the arteries carry, usually, do they carry oxygenated or deoxygenated blood? Usually arteries have oxygenated Very blood. Good. Very good. Excellent. So usually arteries have oxygenated blood with the exception of the pulmonary artery. 
And so then why do they call it the pulmonary artery? Because there's another characteristic associated with arteries and veins. Arteries take blood away from the heart and vein brings it to the heart. So they use that convention. And so since the blood is leaving the heart to go to the lungs, they call it the pulmonary artery. And then it comes back the pulmonary vein. So they didn't use the convention of oxygenation, but instead use the convention or the rule associated with vessels leaving the heart. Those are the arteries and the ones coming back are the veins, right? This is the aorta, major artery leaving the heart itself. And why is the blood pressure in the right here? So this is the artery itself. This is the aortic arch. So the heart would be right, do, 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 right around here. What is the blood pressure? If it was blood pressure was taken here, what will, will it will it be? You think? One twenty. Almost one twenty over eighty. Yeah, just like in normal blood, but one twenty over eighty coming out here. What would happen if you have a rupture in your aortic arch? Dot, 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 dot. They will try to repair it surgically. It's very difficult because of the fact, what they'll do, remember this thing after heal, it doesn't usually heal well. So having a rupture in the aortic arch, yeah, that is always very, very tricky in terms of repairing. This is uh, showing the branches of the aorta, different branches. So here is the arch, heart, and this was the arch, the same aortic arch we're looking at. So of course it comes down and gastric, these words usually refer to different parts or organs of the body. Gastric refers to the digestive system, splenic, spleen, hepatic, liver, renal kidneys, uh, and here's the mesenteric artery that is going to the large intestine as shown, both the superior and inferior mesenteric artery, so named because one is above the other. Right. The testicular going to the testes. And where does the iliac artery go to? Where does that one go to? So the intestines? Yeah. Right. So that one also goes uh, to the intestines. Very important to have that blood supply. Right. So the iliac, they go down uh, past the intestine. Sorry. They, they provide blood flow to the legs, the iliac. We mentioned. Um, it goes to the legs, let me see, it goes down to the legs, the pelvis, reproductive, the iliac, other organs in the pelvis area, the lower pelvis. So will it go to the large intestine? That's a very good question. Let me see if I could. Yeah, it would go to the, that would, does make sense. Yeah. It does go to the large intestine, yeah, the lower portion of the large intestine, yes. So you're quite, you're quite right there, Charles, in terms of that utterance. Now the systemic. Why do they call the systemic circulation the systemic circulation? And why do they call the pulmonary circulation the pulmonary? Anybody? So the systemic goes to the rest of the body. Correct. And the pulmonary goes to? Lungs. lungs, lungs, right? So we have, which is why you'd hear, oftentimes you'd hear that we have a double circulation. And that means the blood passes through the heart twice. First, it comes from the body and it enters the heart. And then this is the oxygenated blood. It leaves the heart, goes to the lungs. It comes back in for a second time. And then it goes into the systemic circulation. As quite rightly mentioned, it goes throughout the body. And these are all the different veins and arteries. You'll be well placed, you know, to learn. Now, I know it's a bit of a pain, but believe you me, you would come across this in virtually all your studies. So it's very good to know all of them in terms of being able to identify them in a label. Pulse. Have you all um, done this skill in, the, in your skills lab yet in terms of taking pulse? You're getting there soon. Oh, you're getting there. Okay. So yeah, you'll be getting there soon in terms of taking the pulse, right? And the most common ones are the carotid radial, the popliteal, and brachial. They are always named or either for the bones, underlying bones, or the muscle that they occur around. All right. So here we have the temporal, underlying the temporal bone, of course. Here you have the facial artery, the carotid artery, that is in your neck, the brachial 
and the radial, of course, related to the radius. As shown here, the femur, the biggest bone in the body, and this one is the femoral, femoral popliteal artery, right, just in the area, popliteal, um, just behind the knee or the patella. Then you have the posterior tibial artery. This is your tibia. So this one then is your posterior tibial. And of course, this one down here, dorsalis pedis artery, related to your foot itself. All right. So atherosclerosis. I think Charles hinted at this this morning. He was wanted to get. And this is when fatty material collects along the walls of the artery. And this happens as well to your sink. Anybody ever notice sometimes when you, your, your sink gets clogged up and the water doesn't drain down? You ever notice that? Yes, sir. And how, how do you clean it out? have a very, uh, a way I learned from TikTok. It was a nice way to clean your sink. Anybody? To get out clogged. When you see, you know, like you turn on the tap and the water is filling up and it's not going down. Anybody knows of a way to get it in? To clear it out? They use that baking soda bomb. Right, baking soda. <laughs> Right, so baking soda is one of the things. So you throw on baking soda. And what do you throw on top of the baking soda? Something that vinegar? with White vinegar? Yes, yeah, there you go. You throw vinegar on it. Right, so just take baking soda. You don't have to force it down. Just throw it, you know, on the, in the area of the drain on top. So make a little mound, you know, just on top of the little grit, you know, what have you not. And throw vinegar on it. And you'll see it has a froth. Right, and it, you know that's straight, and it will wash down the vinegar into the um, into the drain pipe, and that will actually clear your clog. It works very, very well. You could also use it, you know, sometimes in your shower, that um, you will see, like sometimes it gets stopped up when you turn it on, and like the water doesn't want to come out. And similarly, how you could get it, get it to clear out, you could use vinegar. Just take the vinegar, put it like in a bag, as a block bag, and tie it, you know, to the head of the um, of the shower shower head, and just tie it, and the vinegar will do it as well. It would, and leave it, you know, for like about half hour or so, and then take off the bag and turn it on. You'll see it's clear. It will dissolve away the mineral component. If it was only that easy with our... Um, our veins and our, our, you know, particularly arteries, that would have been so nice, but it's not that easy. So we do have this clogging occurring in terms of the thickening fatty material being deposited. All right, so on the topic of fatty ones, which one are the good ones, HDL or LDL? High density lipoproteins or low density lipoproteins, which is a good one, which one well, is I think the bad the, the one? LDL. Which one is which, the LDL? Which one is the bad one? HDLs or LDLs? The, I think the H. If I'm if I'm right, I'm not sure. I think the HDLs are the good ones. That's what you're saying. So I send the H as the bad one. Yeah, I think you're right. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Something went down the wrong truth. HDLs, they, those are the good, the good cholesterol. Um, those are the ones that are absorb cholesterol and carries it back to the liver. The, H, the high density liver proteins. So HDL are the good, and the LDL ones are the naughty ones. All right, so always keep them in check because of the fact you could have the formation of these um, deposition and formation, of course, of clots. Right, is a blood clot a bad thing? Yes, sir. Yes. Well, yes and no. <laughs> it's good if, if if you're hemorrhaging, right? It's a good thing to have it, but it's bad if it just forms in the arteries because you run you run the risk of it detaching and going to the lung, a thrombosis. And if it gets to the lung, well, that's a big problem down there. Right? It could cause, you know, it could it could actually lead to that. Um so that's why deep vein thrombosis, you know, are always dangerous because you run the risk of it detaching and going to the lung. And then that, of course, could block off the circulation and you don't want anything really happening and in relating to your circulation and your lung. So here it is shown in terms of the uh, aorta, carotid and coronary arteries. And what happens if it is, right? So the coronary arteries, sometimes we forget about this. But there's a blood circulation to the tissue of the heart itself. Not with the fact that the heart is an organ that pumps blood, but the tissue itself has to be 
gets its nutrition. And that is, it comes via the coronary circulation. So, you know, sometimes we hear of a bypass. Bypass involves when the coronary arteries become blocked. So usually they will take an artery from your leg, from the, the femoral or branch of the femoral and graft it around. So it by, bypasses the clot. That's why they call it a coronary bypass surgery in terms of bypassing. And that relates to when you have clogging specifically on the coronary arteries that supply blood to the heart itself. Of course, if you do have the clot, in, clot the blockage in the coronary, it could lead to hypertension, stroke, and heart attack. Right? You really don't want blockages in your aorta because that's the main one coming out. And that would significantly affect your, if, affect your blood pressure as well. All right. All right. Oh, there's the, uh, huh? Let me see. Bypass surgery is so serious. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It, it's a very serious thing when you think about it, bypass surgery. And one of the things, you know, sometimes we think, uh, I, I don't know if you realize, every time you go into surgery, you know, you, there is, you run the risk of not coming back. It's by, you know, once it involves anesthesia, there's always that risk of not coming back. You know, then you think, well, you know, uh, but yeah, there's always complications could arise, you know, and you always run the risk of it. So, which is why, you know, it's not a good idea just to be taking surgeries like Sweetie, only unless it's really necessary that you want to really um, take surgeries. All right. So that was it in terms of, so we look at the notes. Let's have a look um, at some of these things. Of course, um, we had the activity sheet uh, to finish off. Well, that is for this week. That's for this week. So we don't have any from the last day to discuss. So let's just quickly have a look at the blood smear. So of course, I know what some of y'all saying. So, so will we have face-to-face -face labs? Did y'all get um, any? All right, no, so get... not at all. We're not asking that at all at all. <laughs> Everybody's staying quiet on that. No, I'm talking about. Did y'all receive any um, emails from Costad? Like any um, what do you call it? Surveys or anything to answer? I think yeah. I must have seen a, a yes, random sir. survey. And everybody yeah. wants and to it. <laughs> but do remember if well if it is you don't want it, you know, vote, uh, you know, put in your, your choice accordingly. Yeah. But it looks thus far that you know, status quo, things will remain like that at least for the semester. You know, uh, I do know, I do know some people, yes, they're missing that touch, you know, the the meeting and interacting with persons. But any suggestion as to that might be considered for the summer and also for next semester. But as far as I, as far as we, we haven't received any instructions differently, it seems that- So we're having a summer semester this year? That's a very good question. Let me not talk all the turn. <laughs> I, I, I retract the statement. <laughs> Let me well, retract the statement, I, good I, point. I would, I would be keeping my eye out. Oh no, but you know, if I am not mistaken, the, the summer, I know it used to be non-mandatory. It's not mandatory. You know, and no, it's, it's, quite, not. it's not right. And usually, what happens is the numbers, it all depends on uh, the numbers in the class. So, a number of classes are not offered during summer, it's only the high demand ones, or for those persons who really need to graduate. So, it's not uh, so you don't have any worries. It's not like they're going to call you out. So you that's know? all of us. <laughs> all of us really need to graduate soon. Yes, yes, yes. So, only unless yes, there's the demand for the class. <laughs> Unless there's a demand for the class, would it be run in the summer? Uh, and particularly for those who graduate, and let's say in the same year or so, would they really bring it out? But other than that, you'll be fine. But so that's why they need us to make, make numbers up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean to actually have the class for the summer? Yes. So one of the things you could do similarly, you know, run a cursory survey. Are you all seeing my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is incredible because sometimes with some of my other students, when I open my, oh no, maybe I bring a, when I open it from a different tab, this one was a link here. Yeah. So if I do this, you're still seeing it? You're seeing the new yes, tab? Yes, sir. 
Yeah, yes, probably sir. as it's because it was a link out from the original one. That's why he's doing that. Okay. But yeah, so you all know about this site called Survey Monkey. Well, you all probably as well as get. Yes, sir. I heard I, I know about it. Okay. And then there's the other one, of course, off of um Survey Monkey. I like it because well it's free, well, it's free. I like always like that word free. Um, so if you want to create a survey, so one of the things you could do is like create a survey and pass it around your colleagues. You know, if you have a particular class that you want for the summer, you know, just pass it around. It has it could be anonymous, but just send it, send it to people in your class and say, hey, you know, just answer accordingly if you want to take this class for the summer. And if you get a favorable response, then you could pass it on to the course coordinator or to your lab instructor, me, myself, you know. So that is one way you could actually push to get a class if you if you really want a class you know done the threshold number usually they will look like between the class usually has a uh, 20 to 30 persons in terms of threshold anywhere from 10 to 14 you know once you could get 10 to 14 persons they would run the class the economics works for when is that number you know so i just a thought you know, to create a survey. And whenever, I'd encourage you, whenever you get a chance to do look at Survey Monkey, it's a nice way to create a survey for anything, really, really. Right, so blood smears, you can just have a look at it. What are all of these blood cells we're looking at here? The most numerous are the lot. Red blood cells. Right, so these are red blood cells. So this talks to this um, the video, it's, it speaks to how it actually creates an the nomenclature or how they go about naming the particular cells. Again, what you would do is they have like an atlas and they do it by comparison. Um, based on knowledge, of course, you would know, or you could just do it by sight, but in general, you know, it comes off of um, the user atlas and they ident to identify the cells. But you know, as you go along, you get more and more adept at it. You all hearing me? Yes, sir, a bit okay. low. Yeah, no one yeah. saying I'm now seeing low again some some error messages here that telling me my audio might be affected. Anyhow, we're almost there. Blood typing. There's one site. Let me see. Um, one really nice site. I think I pointed you, I pointed out during the lecture already, right? The Nobel Prize website. Did yeah. I point that one yes, out? Sir, yes, I think that's the game, right? 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 Yeah. Yeah, so you could check that one out as well, you know, in terms of blood typing, right? It just shows a model of it. And you have your group activity. And when is the deadline to drop off your group activity? Saturday, the 9th of April, which is when? Today. I'll give you an extension on it. That is okay? Okay, yeah. sir. I saw it was opening at three. Opening at three to six. Usually how these... Um, the labs work, you're supposed to do it in class, you know, from three to six. From the experience I've had from my other classes, right? They tell me the how is a little tight for them. So since I grant them the extension, I think it would be unfair if I do grant you all. Oh, I could leave it like this, you know. I could leave it for the three hours if you wish. But for them, I grant them, I actually give them two days to do it. So you want to just leave it at the three hours? It's not a problem with me. Or you want me to give you the little extension? So any leeway is a blessing. <laughs> yeah, because the other what the other classes told me the same thing, you know, that how they have a lot of things going on. And one of the mandates which we have been given as instructors is to try as much as possible. Because I understand is the pressure. I could only with a lot of different people, you have a lot of things going on. And on top of everything, you have this COVID, right? Even though now we are quote unquote returning to normal, it is still um, baby steps, you know, baby steps we're taking. Because if there is an outbreak, as you have seen globally in um, in the UK, in Australia, in China, they have reverted to certain policies that were in place uh, during the pandemic itself. So while we, you know, we still feel that we still have to keep one eye open, as it were, sleeping with one eye open. We still have to be erring on the side of caution, as it were. All right, so I don't want to... Three, the three hour period was given initially, but when I was speaking to some of my other um, classes, you know, they told me as much. So as I said, I will grant the same thing. So I will change it once this class is closed. So you would have until then, so until Monday at 6 p.m. 
in terms of giving it up, okay? Thank you, sir. Okay, no problem. Um, so a question while you're on the topic. Go ahead. In terms of the labs, are all the labs for this class here, are they all group assignments? Yes, with the exception of the, um, the spotter exams, where everything else is group assignments, yes. So how, the question you're probably asking, how do you do it? That's what you want to ask? Or that, or that was it full stop? No, that was the only question. I just find that, um, well, it has all its group assignments and I'm really, I'm not sure as to how well I'm doing in the group assignment. So it doesn't really show me our feedback really per se. One of the things which we will do with this lab every week, the following week, we'll actually go through the lab. So you'll be getting feedback on the following week. This week, we have no labs from before, so we wouldn't be able to go through them. So like when, next week, when we come in, we'll be going through, we'll go through the lab, but we'll be going through at the end of the lab, when we finish the formal part, we'll be going through this, the blood lab then. So you would get feedback at that point in terms of it. When you say feedback, you mean specifically a grade. That's what you mean? Um, well, yes, and at the end of the day, if um, what I'm doing, I want to hope that what I'm contributing is correct. So right. I would like to know how I'm right. doing. So in, right, so in, the, in going through, you think that would work in terms of when we go through it? Would that, would that suffice you in terms of knowing how, if what you did was correct or not? Well, yes, it will help at, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, but then um, if I am wrong, nothing will change. So Of course, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. So, <laughs> oh, you, you were thinking about pre-help then, that's what you're thinking? No, I think I'm, I'm right now, as it now starts, I think mm -hmm. I'm understanding clearly enough mm -hmm. as to what mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do. But you just but want the feedback I... to know how you're going. Correct, if so I'm the feedback, on the right, right, so the feedback will come um from uh, as i said next week once the lab is done the following week we'll actually go through it so you'll be able to gauge how well you're doing you know in terms of your contribution if you go out in left field or if you go out in right field you know so yeah that is one way of knowing okay it. much appreciated sir mm -hmm. you're welcome okay all right so, so quest, go ahead question. go ahead charles yes um well, one is more of a suggestion. Mm -hmm. When we, um, like the deadline time, when you see, when you see like 1201, I always mistake that for midnight. I <laughs> than... that. Not only you, not yeah. only you. So I always submitting things late and I don't want to impact my grade. And so I was mm -hmm. wondering if maybe we could change the time, maybe to 11, <laughs> 59, okay. <laughs> you know? Okay, okay. I hear Rather than no, 1201. I kid you not, I kid you not, which is why I put 1201, because I get confused as well. You know, in terms of putting like midnight, Yes, I, I, I think I have up until midnight on the... Or if it's 12 a.m. Yeah, I think I have you know? up until midnight on the 9th. Never to know it's, it's 12.01 a.m. on the 9th. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, oh, I understand. So, okay, I will do... <laughs> I will do I'll, right, yeah, sir, I'll, please. I'll put 11.59. Because... <laughs> I mean, um, two minutes is a major difference. I understand 11.59. Um, I'll, I'll put 11.59 p.m. Yeah, yeah right. sure, yes, sir. Right? Uh, and another question, sir. Uh, I don't know if I missed it. Um, but um, for group assignment, mm -hmm. what the topics posted? Yeah, in terms of for the lab? No, for um, general class. Or oh, the, the assignment or the group assignment? No. Yeah. no, it's not that you missed it, no. Okay, I just wanted to be sure. So if you're talking, we're not hearing. Oh, shoot. I realized I was talking and I know the my pause button was on. Right. So, so yes, so in terms of your assignment, 
some people so are eagerly awaiting your assignment. The deadline is like the week, the last week of class. So you do have time. If you want it up, fair enough. It's SNF too. Yeah. All right, I'll put it up. I could do that because I want to give okay. you all any pressure. Look, look for it by tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow, 11.59 p.m. Okay, Charles? <laughs> yes, sir. The group assignment, yes. But you would have until, I want to say, the last week yes, sir, of but the it's, semester. It's, Some people want to start for, early. For I'm me, the sooner we can start it, the better, because right now I'm a functional overwhelmed, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I understand. I, I really don't want to be any more overwhelmed like, I'm in the middle of this, you know? Okay, no problem. All right. All right, so like two things, let me, let me write it down. In terms of to do, right, two things, writing the two things, da 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 11.59 p.m. so people will understand it and to send group assignment to S to SNF2 okay great anything else um anything else so you can just remind me again the format in which we have to upload the worksheets if it's word or we could um, um upload it as a pdf and anyone would work uh-huh, okay, good. Because I know you were saying something about converting that, so I wanted to, I wanted to make sure. Yeah, some persons... Well, it's not for this one, because with, with SNF2, all of the all of the lab the worksheets are now watching here, all of them are uh, Word. The, the first one, the one on blood, was actually a PDF. So I converted it for you, to a Word document, because persons said how the Word was more convenient. So all, all right. Of, they don't have that issue. Yeah, but either way, after you finish it, if you want to convert it to a PDF, then send it in, that's fine. If you want to leave it as a Word document, that's fine. So either one, you could use either format, Word or PDF to submit it, okay? It will take Yes, sir. All right. Anything else? Any other? Anything else probably anybody wants to say in terms of issues or anything? No, sir. All right. Well, if not, just, so just follow the instructions, you know, as given. Uh, for this in terms of finishing off, just read through and of course finish off the group activity worksheets. Um, once I close off the class, so it'll be, let me see, it's 12.02, it will open at 12.15, okay? So for those who want to just do it right away, at 12.15, it's going to open in the next 10 minutes. So you could actually, um, if you want to drop it off at that time, okay? Anything else? Yes, nope. sir. Understood. All right. Let me then just um, let me just call 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 rule, and then that's it. Lab, lab section Tuesday, Saturday class two one one five five two zero two. Um. Lab section SNF one, SNF two, Saturday. Lab section SNF two. Right, great. Okay, I took a snap of the Zoom, so I have all the names there. So I will just fill it in. Okay, so if is if nothing, yes, if nothing else, then Alexis, Alia, Amira, Anissa. Angeline, Bina, Brittany, Chanel, Charles, Crystal, Daniel, Judith, Khadija, Kim, Risa, Sophia, Suan, and Tanisha. As with my distinct pleasure, I'll open up the drop box in the, for the next 15 minutes and you'll have two days to drop it in in terms of deadline. And do have a good day. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. Thank you. 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 Thank you.